and oh, yeah, 1008 or 1009. That looks like 1098. Adam, I'm going to ask the clerk to call roll call, please. Commissioner Hosty? Here. Commissioner Huskins? Here. Commissioner Mannix? Here. Commissioner Harris? Here. Mayor Calderon? Here. Thank you, uh, commissioners. We have provisions for public comment, so at this time I'll open it up for any public comment. We're going to continue on. Commissioners, you should all have in front of you, before we get into our budget discussion, uh, you should have in front of you two documents. And uh, the purpose of these documents that you have uh, is to amend an ordinance that we had adopted to provide for the uh, half a percent non home rule sales tax. The, um, the state has asked us to amend our ordinance to add just a little specificity with respect to when the uh, collection of that sales tax would become effective, which is July 1st. And so what you have before you, uh, and because timing is of the essence, as a reason that we added it to today's agenda, and so, uh, if it's all your pleasure, I would entertain a motion uh, to adopt the amended ordinance. So, been moved by Maddox. Is there a second? Second. Second by Hosty, and then, so we'll have some discussion. The clerk may proceed with the roll. Commissioner Hosty. Aye. Commissioner Haskins. Aye. Commissioner Maddox. Aye. Commissioner Harris. No. Mayor Calderon. Aye. The motion is approved and adopted. Thank you, Commissioner. So now we're going to move on to. Um, the budget okay. uh, budget discussions, and I think we're going to receive a presentation first, and then we will uh, move on to uh, go through department by department discussion. So, Jim, you're going to take over. Thank you, Your Honor, and uh, welcome to fall. I hope you all enjoyed the one day of summer. <laughs> um, because it always confuses me, I'll, I'll remind all of you that while it is actually calendar year 14, we're actually talking about fiscal year 15. I always get that confused, so if I mix them up and go back and forth a few times, just kind of keep it in mind, we're talking about budget year 15. The first slide is just sort of a review, and again, I'd like to stop just one second. Mayor, with, with your permission, I'd like, I know the rules are suspended, so at any time, I'd just like to be able to ask Tish to uh, add in and subtract from things that I may say. So, uh, Tish, when I give you the, the last year, it's time for you. Um, this is a snapshot of the last several years of revenues and expenses. <clears throat> the things that I'll call out to you specifically are in years like fiscal year 12, where you see that we had a net revenues over expenses of 3356000 and the reason that that number is so high in that one particular year is that's the year that we merged the parking fund into the general fund. So the general fund had to receive all of those assets. It came in mostly as assets, very little cash, but that number obviously looks very skewed. When you look at fiscal 13, it still shows that we had $1.2 million revenues versus expenses. That was the year that we got the Ike grant for $750,000, and that too had to be recognized as revenue. So the number is again a bit skewed. Um, this is more likely. In, in fiscal 14, we're projecting right around $100,000 of revenue over expenses. So um, in my uh, notes here, fiscal year 14, uh, projected revenues over expenses is 98,000 compared to budgeted 611,000. General fund net, net loss of 787, that's over budget, as revenue sh uh, shortfalls were offset by reductions in expenditures. Water fund net gain of 886,929, also due to reduced expenses. So what we're showing you here is that while we budgeted with our best, and um, you know, those of you who've been down here for a while, and you all have now at this point, you understand when we're setting up our budget, it's our best estimation of things like revenues over several different fields. It's sales tax, it's permits, it's all kinds of things. And all we can really do is use data that we can gather from several years in the past. We can look at trends, we can look at all kinds of things 
But at the end of the day, Tish and I plug a number in, and, and we hope that it meets that. As the year goes on and we see that revenues are falling short, well, that's when we start talking to each of our department heads, say, folks, it's not going like we planned. Sales taxes aren't coming in where we expected, or one of the other funds, property taxes aren't coming in quite the way we expected. We're going to need to slow down here on expenses. And if it continues, then we say we need to slow down more. To the point this year where literally every time John sent the crew out, he and I would talk about it. Before John ordered salt, he and I would talk about it and try to make our best estimation of do we really need the salt this time? Can we get 200 tons instead of 400 tons? You know, how, how can we minimize our cash flow out? Um, so I'm very happy to say that at the end of the day, we believe we're going to end up after audit right around 100,000. For fiscal 215, 2015 rather, uh, they reflect a 6.3 increase in expenditures and a 6. Um, Let's see, and expend our excuse me, revenue six point three, and expenditures of six percent. Uh, that revenues over expenditures expectation is seven thirty nine. Don't get fooled by this number, because a very big portion of that is water. So, general fund. And I want everybody to hear this pretty clearly. <laughs> general fund is a balanced budget. Right now, as it stands, it's balanced. It's neutral. We got. $30,000, $40,000 maybe to the positive side, revenue over expenses in the general fund. So as we discuss each department, well, I can understand that if somebody suggests to me that we need to add $50,000 to do something, you need to help me understand where I get the revenue from. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind as we start talking about the departments. And, and believe me, that's why we're having the meeting there's ability to shift money from places. You might all, and I suspect that you probably do, have some ideas of things that you think I could spend less on so that we could spend more in other places. That's what we're here for today. So. Here's some of the highlights. We had a full conversion of LED street lighting. Construction loan uh, note was amortized to a 10-year loan from the construction loan that it had been under, and uh, we got that loan at 3.25% with the local bank. And I, I want to talk about that for just a minute because when we first started the LED project, we were working at it as a turnkey. You guys just tell us to go and we're going to go. We have engineering set up. We have the manufacturer. We have the installers, we have the warranty guys, and we have your finance. Well, as we started getting into the process a little bit at the suggestion of both the mayor and Commissioner Holmes, <coughs> they asked me to go to our local bank and see if our local bank could turn that note, could offer us the same deal. Well, you know what? They couldn't offer us the same deal. They offered us a better deal. They offered us a half a percent less on the interest over 10 years. And they were able to give us a construction loan for the duration of the construction, so we never had to pay the full amount until we had the full asset. So it actually worked out very well for us. Uh, annual savings of approximately 50% for both energy and maintenance. Um, and that's repaying of the general fund debt for the infrastructure improvement. So that's how we're funding it because our energy costs are reduced by actually a little bit more than 50%, and the maintenance cost is virtually zero. And it went from, maintenance used to be 55 to 60,000 a year was a base number. Anything that they did from a knockdown pole or something was in addition to that. So typically now what we see on a monthly basis from our uh, lighting uh, contractor is just the work that's come up as a result of an accident or some infrastructure that's something other than the light fixture itself. I'm happy to say that light fixtures themselves in the year and five months that we've had them up have been non-existent. There have been no issues with light fixtures themselves. Um, the audit was completed and filed on time and under budget. 
Many of the prior year's audit findings on internal controls have not been repeated. That's a, that's a big one because for every year, mostly because of the audit process that it's taken so long to get through the audit process and it's not necessarily from anything that any of us have done department head wise or finance department wise it's just an issue of actually getting it done by the time we get in all of the data that's required and a lot of it is external data such as TIF reports and stuff that go into the audit by the time they get it all together and come up with the final report it's very difficult to make the state's deadline of October 1st, I think. End of October. Second. End of October. Always had a hard time meeting that date. This year, through um, a lot of late hours and long weekends, um, Tish and Danielle were able to get the auditors everything that they needed. They worked uh, more closely with the auditors than that they ever have. And I'm very happy to say that for the first time in a really long time, uh, it was completed on time, filed with the state on time. So that that finding in their uh, letter to us has been um, negated. This is a big one. It doesn't sound like a big one. But the village recognized over $40,000 in savings by using American Express corporate reward points things like computer printers, office supplies, training, and conferences. You all know that almost anything that you need or want, you can find it on Amazon. And it took a little bit of time to get each of the department heads to understand, you know what, let me look for that on Amazon and see where we can, if we can buy it. We bought things like, for the police department, they had some, um, stand-up mannequins that they use for self-defense training. I think uh, they even might have uh, purchased some um, training ammunition from Amazon. Um, certainly things like computers, that, that's a no-brainer. But $40,000 has been recognized to the Village General Fund, um, and it's free. The City of Chicago allows us to pay our water bill with our American Express card. <coughs> We, of course, pay the amount uh, monthly, so there's no charges to us for late fees, and they give us those points. So um, that's, that's really a big deal. And by the way, um, it's not just a, uh, the city of Chicago. Tisha and Danielle and, and, frankly, all of the department heads have looked hard at all of their members. Who else will take American Express card for payment? Because believe me, we'll pay just about anything we can with that American Express card to earn those points because we've proven that we can use them and we've proven that it's cash in our pocket. It doesn't cost us anything. Please. Um, revenues associated with construction permits and property, trans uh, property transfer exceeded expectation. This is one that Tish and I use when we start putting the budget together in terms of revenues that you know what, things are picking up. People are transferring houses, and um, the real estate market is moving again. They're certainly not to 2006 and seven levels in terms of uh, uh, pricing, but they're absolutely there in terms of multiple offers on houses. Uh, list price is being uh, received on several of them, so People are spending money on their own houses. They're, they're fixing up, they're adding additions, they're doing things to their own houses. All of that is a good sign, not only in the housing market, but Tish and I look at that in the sales tax market as well. Because if people are starting to spend money on their homes again, then they're buying again. And that's, as you know, a lot of the income that the village makes is off of its sales tax. So we look for those indicators to start helping us come up with our revenue numbers. This is a really big one that cannot be overstated. All departments remain under budget despite expenses related to extreme weather conditions um, exceeding individual line items. So we all know we had a horrible winter. Um, but I, I want you to understand that the horrible winter moves to other areas 
not just John and Public Works. It moves to fuel because many, many weeks over the winter, John had every piece of equipment that he has in the garage running 18 to 24 hours straight. That's every truck, that's every loader, that's every bobcat, that's snow blowers. So it's not only the overtime associated with the people, although that was expensive, it's all that equipment that goes with it. Several nights the police department had to have extra people on the street for either traffic control. Fire department manned the firehouse on several of those really big storms with an engine on the south side of town so that if something happened, we could move. So I want you to understand that when we talk about a horrible winter, that's over every department, although John certainly got the brunt of it. But everybody um, understood that there's still work to do. We have to get it done, but how can we do it most efficiently? How can we save the most amount of money that we possibly can, but still get the work done and keep the town as nice as it always was? So that's a really big item. Also last year, um, we purchased from the general fund two police vehicles, which actually came out of the federal customs um, and police funds. So that's, um, that's not, or excuse me, the parking lot <coughs> is 1004 Troost, um, which is a revenue generator now. We were able to purchase that parking lot for, Mr. Mayor, was it $25,000? $25, the really nice thing about that lot is it was already a parking lot. Literally what we did there is put a sign up that said it's night parking now, we restriped it, and we sell permits in that lot now. So that was a, a, a good purchase. Um, it made a lot of sense because it provided some much needed night parking on the south end of town and it was ready to go. And then, then from the police uh, customs fund and police vehicle fund, um, they did police, uh, purchase two police vehicles. Um, we did six alleys last year out of the VIP fund. And certainly, you know, as, as we moved into that referendum this year for the half a percent, we heard some people say that they didn't spend the first half a percent wisely. Well, in the coming weeks, I'm going to show you very definitely how we did spend um, over the life of the first half a percent. I'm going to show you very clearly how we spent that money. And I think you'll be kind of surprised at what the numbers actually turn out to be. But last summer, we did six alleys. And it just, so all of you know, there were four main alleys, but two of them had T's. So the T alley is a whole separate alley, and that's how we got to the number of six as opposed to four. I think our total costs were five fifty to $600,000. Um, and so you know, the reason that that fund had a little bit of extra money, because typically that first half a percent really just pays for the bond that we went out for when it came into effect way back at the start of the VIP project in 2005, I think. But you'll recall that several years ago, we refinanced that debt to get the lower rate. That gave that fund one-time cash infusion, which allowed us to come out this last year and do a, a, a lot of work in the alleys. Here's some uh, stuff coming up this year. This will be the first full year of the Illinois State Local Debt Recovery. Um, we're continuing our discussions with the collection agencies regarding the fees and the collection status. So just so everybody knows, with the local debt recovery, nobody goes to local debt recovery until it's been adjudicated here with multiple notices, and then it goes to the collection agency and kind of once it hits the collection agency, the village of Forest Park is done with it until there's a, uh, a collection. And then we split the fees uh, based on that collection. Village Hall roof replacement. Um, we did accept the bids with the alternate. And um, I'm happy to say that they were under the engine engineer's estimate. Um, I know all of you on the police department side are aware that uh, just about every time it rains, they remember that we need a new roof on the village hall. And uh, last summer, it got to be um, 
it, it reached the tipping point, let's just say that. And I had the very unfortunate task of walking into my friend in the finance department and saying, I know we don't really have the money for this, but next spring we're going to have to do the roof. So you're going to have to help me find the money. And, and, and we have. We found the money in the roof. Uh, I think we have a pre-construction meeting on the roof probably next week or so, John. And then that work will start shortly after that. Um, capital assets proposal. Uh, the fire chief and deputy chief are working on a grant uh, towards the purchase of a fire engine. I think we put uh, on top of the grant that he hopes to get 140000 chief, in your budget. Um, I want you all to know that one doesn't come without the other. If there's no grant, there's no fire engine. So this isn't going to be one where we don't get the grant and then the chief comes and says, well, I need all 500000 now for the fire engine. It's, it's one and or the other. We don't get the grant, then we don't get the fire engine. Um, chief, if, if you will, and Mayor, with your permission, just how old is the engine that you're looking to replace? 21, 21 years old. Yeah. 21 years. And I mean, it, it's hard for me to grasp that that engine is 21 years old because I was around when we got it. Um, and it, too, is reaching the point where you're starting to throw good money after bad. Um, it's, not, it's not to the point where we can't do it anymore, where we can't fix it, but um, our fire trucks go to a, a, an outside maintenance facility and they're getting to the point where they're starting to ask the questions, okay, how much more do you want to put into this machine uh, before it's not only not serviceable and obsolete for the mission that we're meant for. And then um, we'll talk about this in a couple other areas. Um, our ambulance is 10 years old, and the ambulance um, probably is out on the street 10 out of every 24 hours in one form or another. And, and by the way, I just made up that number, but I'm just going for how often I see it go by. Uh, but I'll bet you there is some data that suggests how often it's out. Um, the chief, and this is starting to happen more and more, not only with the villages in general, but certainly throughout the country, the chief is working with the chiefs in uh, River Forest and just River Forest at this point? He's got four other communities. Four other there. communities who are looking to kind of band together and say, hey, Mr. Ambulance Dealer, if we buy four of them, what can you do for us, as opposed to one? Um, so again, this purchase doesn't happen unless that guy comes up with a good number and it makes sense for all four towns that are going in after it all at the same time. And again, I, I, I know that you all know this, but I want to repeat it. You're not going to come in here one day and see a new ambulance sitting in the garage. Let's say that the chief and deputy chief figure out a way to get the suburban purchasing agreement together. Um, that will require a number of steps. One of them would be an MOU, uh, a, memorandum, a memorandum of understanding. You would all vote on that. Certainly when, when we started developing specs and coming up with numbers and actually we're going to make the sale, the purchase rather, you would all vote on that. So uh, I don't want you to think that this is the last time you'll ever hear about a fire truck or an ambulance. There's a lot of steps that the council, both uh, positively or potentially negatively, that you can and should take uh, in the event that any of these come to fruition. Um, we are in the early stages of discussing, actually not discussing, but designing what they call a sally port for the police department. And basically that would be a, um, a garage structure built on the back of 501 displays that would allow for an enclosed area to keep some of our high-end equipment, um, like our SWAT vehicle, the motorcycles, the bicycles, some of that kind of stuff that's overflowing the garage that we have now, or it's actually sitting outside, but it will also allow for the secure and enclosed um, ability to transport prisoners um, in the event that we had a high-risk prisoner or um, a prisoner, for example, who needed medical attention. 
the ambulance could uh, back into the garage. There'll be doors from within the police department that fall in an enclosed structure that can make a transfer. I want you to understand that that will be 100% funded through um, the seizure fund, federal <coughs> customs money, and um, that whole thing requires process as well. Um, as a matter of fact, because it's going to be built close to lot lines, it's going to require zoning. And that zoning hearing is actually coming up next Monday. Um, from there, it's actually going to require planning. And certainly before it gets all the way through, you will all see um, a, a fairly detailed package of information that both the chief and the fire, uh, police chief and fire chief are putting together uh, that will talk about things like why there and not across the alley. What was the genesis of it? Why do we need it? Why is it important to have a secure area? We'll show you elevations of what we're proposing, so on and so forth. So you should all have a good idea of what's going to happen there before any uh, dirt gets turned over. But we needed to include it because there's likely to be an expenditure. Yes, sir. So that's going before the zoning board on Monday? Yes. Which means people start asking, can you get that out to the elected officials so we can get a look at yep. what that's being proposed? Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, we'll, to we'll make sure you get the zoning package, Mark, but um, the zoning package probably won't have as detailed in it, an analysis of what the structure is actually look like, because theoretically the zoning board is only supposed to look at the zoning portion of it. The plan side will see more of what we have, but I'll make sure that you all get um, everything that the zoning board sees. It just may not be the complete package that I want the police chief to detail for all of you. Fair enough? Um, water fund revenues allocated for sewer and water main improvements. Um, myself and John Doss, along with um, Jim Emilio from Christopher Burke Engineering, along with uh, Commissioner Mannix, are working and, and frankly, we're putting the finishing touches on um, an improvement program, if you will, that will cover construction work for this season, for calendar 2015, and actually out five years. Um, my intention is to have that available for you um, to be part of a presentation at our next village council meeting. Uh, that's my intention. I, if I have it all together by then, that's what I will do. That will detail some of the water fund improvements that we're talking about. I got to tell this. Um, Madison Street reconstruction is scheduled for spring of 2015 with the ITEP grant and the VIP fund, the non home rule municipal retailers occupation tax, and non home rule municipal service occupation tax. This increased now from one half to one percent. And that's effective July 1st, 2014, and that's to fund those infrastructure improvements that I'll detail more fully for you um, at our next council meeting. Engineering study and preliminary work for the Roosevelt Road improvements through the Hannock Avenue tip and the wall tip. Um, we are working on some very preliminary engineering designs for uh, Roosevelt Road that would pretty much incorporate hopefully some ITEP funding which goes specifically for pedestrian amenities and um, things like that, lighting benches, things <coughs> like that, but also a full resurfacing of that stretch of Roosevelt Road all the way through. Um, but when you're dealing with an IDOT road, which we are, you really need to start the preliminary planning very early for that if you want to get it built within the next couple of years. So. Um, that presentation I'll be giving shortly will detail some of the engineering money that we're going to have to spend in the next year or so. Uh, several weeks ago, uh, right at the end of mm, April 28th, I think we turned it in, in another effort to understand that um, problems are not just in this village, they're regional. Um, the mayor, along with the mayors of Oak Park and River Forest, um, got their staff together and asked us to collectively come up with a grant act 
that application for the Harlem Avenue Viaduct. Uh, Harlem at basically uh, Lake Street there, Circle, however you want to phrase it. But we all know that it's been uh, since we were little kids, there's been trucks getting stuck under there. Um, when we reviewed the data from all of the planning that's gone into this process so far on the crash studies, it's amazing how many people have accidents there. And luckily, they're not real serious accidents. They're people trying to squeeze three lanes into two uh, as they go through the center uh, or the viaduct there. Uh, so they're more fender bender type accidents. But it's absolutely a dangerous intersection. Uh, we did submit that application on April 28th, and it'll be months before we hear anything. Um, and then the development of a capital improvement plan and fund reserve policy. Working with both um, Commissioner Hosty and the mayor, one of the, one of the, I guess complaints, that may be too strong a word, but one of the things that the village has always wanted to do was develop a capital improvement plan. And I'm probably on record in several instances of saying, boy, would I love to have a capital improvement plan. I just need one thing, capital. And, and for too many years, you go back to an original slide we had there, there's been no capital. I mean, the revenues are just barely meeting expenses, so I've not been able to shift any money. Well, over the course of this last fiscal year, um, Tish and I have started taking 2% monthly of actual revenues received. Doesn't sound like a lot of money, and it's not a lot of money. Okay, after we paid all the bills for the month, there's still some revenue. Let's take 2% of that, let's sweep it out, and let's put it in a separate account. But we did that. We got a little embarrassed about this. <laughs> it's $35,000. But you know what? It's a start. And it's a policy that we have in place to actually start saving money for the rainy day, which unfortunately we have a lot of around here. Um, but you know, we hope to be able to add to that with some, you know, maybe as, uh, maybe we start seeing sales taxes do better. And you know what, then we'll make it 3% that comes out. But the bottom line is, there is a separate account now for capital improvements. And it's not an isolated fund, I want everyone to understand that. It's not isolated. If we need the money to pay expenses, it's available to us, but there is, a separate account now that has some rainy day money in it. And, that, and that's that's a, uh, a big goal that both Tish and I and the Commissioner and uh, the Mayor have been trying to get at for several years. Continue. So. There's way too much staff, uh, stuff happening on that slide for me, so I'll let you sort of digest that for a minute. Um, we showed you that uh, you know, water fund revenue is 24%, property taxes, this is where our revenue comes from. Uh, state tax is 19%, 7% for um, utility franchise fees for services, 10, 8% is uh, fines and penalties, and miscellaneous is 7%. Uh, again, the bottom note there, water fund is projecting an increase of 609,000. Um, that has a lot to do with the water rate increase from uh, Mayor Rahm. And uh, again, that's something that uh, our mayor um, <coughs> is part of the task force with the WCMC has been working on uh, not only at the local level in meetings with uh, the mayor, uh, who's really not real receptive as you can imagine. Um, they're working on it at multiple levels, uh, both regionally and also in Springfield, uh, to try and get some legislation passed that essentially makes the city of Chicago prove up why they're raising the rates, much like our um, electric and gas utilities have to do. They have to prove up. If ComEd wants to raise your rate by a couple of cents a kilowatt hour, they got to prove it up. Why do we need it? The city of Chicago doesn't have to do that. He sends out a bill, and you gotta pay it, because we don't have a lot of other options. That's all. Sorry, Tim. Uh-oh. This is Tisha's favorite slide. 
Um, so the, the big thing here is, you know, I wanted to show you how the money actually gets spent every year. Uh, wages and benefits, uh, it's an increase, uh, as you can see, 3%, 7% for operations, debt. Uh, this is the budget year, of course, 59, that includes the fire vehicles, and all other is actually down 3.9%. Here's an interesting number, though, and, I, and I, again, when people try to tell each of you and me that the village is wasteful and we spend too much money, I want you to look at this number right here, and it pretty much says that 63% of every dollar that comes into the village goes for wages and benefits. And it, it shows up as 50, but that's if you include the water fund, and that kind of skews the number a little bit. But really think of it, 60 cents of every dollar goes to pay staff. Um, I can guarantee you that if I asked each of the individual department heads if they have too many people, they'd tell you no. The police department actually is undermanned right now. You, you actually uh, approve the hiring of another person for them. So we don't have a lot of fluff when you consider that 60% of our budget is wages. Six union contracts. So there's not a lot of people out of the 130-ish full-time employees um, who are not covered by a collective bargaining agreement. Six unions, over 130 people. Um, so this is a kind of another interesting <coughs> one. The debt only accounts for 3.4% of our expenditures. And again, when, when people want to say that uh, we got too much debt out there, uh, you know, that we're overloaded in debt, the reality is we're not overloaded in debt. Only 3.9% of our total revenue goes towards debt. And uh, that's not a really very high number. Uh, go ahead. Any, anything else on that one you want to talk about? This show? Okay. Just, I'm going to kind of talk about this, the VIP um, and non-major funds. Fiscal year 14, we anticipate that that will be the number collected for the first half a percent, just over a million dollars. We anticipate that we'll get another roughly $900,000. So if you consider that that second half a percent should be between $800 and a million, you'll probably be safe. A couple of ones that I want to bring to your attention are, if you see in the Brown Street TIF, we projected 405,000, and uh, this year we're projecting 353. That's a negative number, and people would ask, well, how did it get negative? Well, it got negative because property taxes didn't come in the way they want. Sometimes it's due to appeals that maybe <coughs> are recognized, but property taxes didn't come in, so that's why you see some negatives in there. The Harlem Harrison tip has always been a negative tip. It's never had enough money to even pay the original debt for um, creating it. And then the Roosevelt Hannah tip. Um, and then we're talking about some expenditures over the next uh, year to pay not only uh, some infrastructure improvements, but the financing on the debt. Yeah, all I heard about like this discussion. Um, if there's any questions about anything I presented, just be happy. Otherwise, Mayor, I'm going to turn it over to you. Thank you all for your attention. Questions or comments? Thoughts? Concerns? <coughs> In a uh, kind of a, a, a global setting, and it, it really is not going to pertain to any, well, I suppose it could have pertained to, I'm not certain. But I wanted to just bring your attention um, a couple of thoughts that, that could have an impact to our communities, specifically in terms of operating revenue, and it kind of ties into one of the points. Uh, that was laid out on the slide, and that is, you know, this is this is going to be the uh, first full year of us 
be at some point receiving money as a result of the Local Debt Recovery Act. And as was shared with all of you uh, a meeting or two ago, at this point in time, it looks like at least the total amount of offset money, you know, is well over three hundred thousand. Now, keep in mind, we're not going to get all of that a portion of that is going to go to the collection company. But here's my point: none of us sitting here are going to know next year if that same level of income is going to repeat itself okay because a lot of this debt recovery is based upon very old tickets and so this you know this initial cycle is most likely going to produce a higher level of income than what we may see in future years here's my concern my concern is that we program in the revenue from the Local Debt Recovery Act into general obligations, rather than maybe, my suggestion is, taking 100% of what, whatever that revenue is and reserving it. I, I'm throwing it out there for thought as we kind of go through this, because in some respects I would call it half the money. It's going to be better than, than one time, but I don't think what we're going to see this year is going to repeat itself at the same level in years to come because a lot of those stock laws will have been cleared up. We're not going to have the backlog of uh, very aged tickets on a go-forward basis because a lot of them are being uh, cleared up through this year's Local Debt Recovery Act. So I think that we should be very, very careful on how we treat some of the uh, some sources of revenue that uh, aren't going to uh, repeat themselves at the same level. Another example of that is, and it also ties together with uh, some of the, uh, the comments on the uh, PowerPoint. You know, we had the pleasure for the last nine or ten years having a police officer assigned to the U.S. Customs Bureau. As a result of that, uh, the police department enjoyed a, very, very, a fairly healthy revenue stream of segregated funds that, that were um, as a result of activities through uh, arrests with the U.S. Customs and our police officer. That police officer is no longer with U.S. Customs. The bottom line is that revenue source is going to dry up. As was pointed out in the uh, PowerPoint, you know, we're looking at installing a sally port um, attached to the police department. It's going to be paid with some remaining U.S. Custom funds. But there's a, a case where we're gonna we're gonna add to the assets of the village with a revenue stream that is not going to be recurring again, you know. So and, and we've done a couple of things. I mean, squad cars have been purchased with U.S. Customs, customs money, and we're not going to be able to do that again. So how are we going to replace uh, police cars in the future, for instance? Over the last nine or ten years, uh, would you know offhand about how much we took in customs wise? Well, I think we have a balance right now of about four hundred thousand dollars. What, uh, what do you think it resulted in, in the nine or ten years? <coughs> a couple million. Yeah. So you know, the chief's indicating over that time period, a total of a couple million dollars, you know, came into the village of Forest Park, and um, that money by law could only be used for uh, police-related operations. It's one of the reasons that we're able to do the sally port, even though it's going to be a structure, ultimately will become a piece of the public property, um, but because it's associated with the police department, it's an eligible expense for customs money. Point is, the village of Forest Park has enjoyed a couple of million dollars worth of stuff related to the police department that on a go-forward basis, we are not going to have that same pleasure anymore. Well, we've had some great benefit from it that I think has a long-term, you know, 501's reconstruction came out of that, did it not? It did. A number of cars, yeah, obviously we need to identify the stream for the cars, but now we have a detective unit, now we're going to have a sally port. You know, things like that are just the short-term use that we're gonna have to put in every year. So it's been good how we've used that for long-term physical expansion. 
we're not currently going, well, now we need to build this other $2 million thing for the police department. So it's not like we're pulling things out of the budget like manpower, you know, recurring costs. Not yet. In two or three or four years from now, the landscape could look much different if we don't start taking these steps today um, to, be, to be cautious on how we move forward because some of these revenue streams are not going to be repeating themselves. Okay, uh, just to kind of stimulate some thought, I'm just going to do what I've done in the past. Um, we'll open up our binders. Everybody's got uh, everybody else's budgets, and we'll just start with tab one, work our way down, see if there's any questions, comments, or concerns. I'll begin with tab one. Operations one summer. <laughs> we'll move on to tab two. I'd like more. You want more? Tab two, revenues. You want more? How do we do it? We take the TIF money on Roosevelt Road, increase the viability of it, and the tax revenues as well. Okay. How about moving on to tab three? what the title of the tab is in your column. Okay. I will. Tab 3 is Department of Public Affairs. We're going to move on to tab 4, which is the Police Department. We'll move on to tab 5, Community Center. Tab six, village clerk. Tab seven, fire department. What percentage are we hoping to get grants for the truck and the, uh, or the <coughs> fire truck? Uh, I think the total cost for the fire truck you were saying was about 500000 and we're looking at about 300, uh, shy of 375 I think, around 370 or so. A grant? A grant, correct. And, and Commissioner, I think I explained a little bit. Um, they don't get it, they don't get it. Right, but the other side of that too is that in the event that the grant doesn't come through, that's sort of a little built-in fluff. Um, you know, and, and obviously it's not much, but if the grant doesn't come through, then in that line item, it's possible to potentially transfer that money to some other area that needs it in the event. Tab eight, public health and safety. Your Honor, just here for one moment, if I may. Um, last year, uh, actually, it had been in the budget for several years, but uh, we, we did uh, install the software um, into the Department of Public Health and Safety Department. The software is up and running. Uh, as Commissioner Hoskins knows, he's been keeping a very close eye on its implementation. Um, we have a database that we were able to kind of attain from the county to kind of give us a base. And while it's not fully operational yet, um, any new requests that come in for permits are added into that software. Um, and as time goes on, it's being implemented more fully, uh, really each and every week, each and every day when, when a new permit application or construction license goes out. And uh, thus far, it, it seems to be doing the job that we've asked it to do. The vendor has been very supportive of us, and uh, it's, it's starting to work the way we had hoped it would work. And that's all I 
Your Honor, I don't know if this is the department or if it falls back in your department. Do you want to have a discussion about uh, economic development and any funding towards that? I was going to talk about that at the end because it will probably go back to public affairs. Okay. Yes. Then I will hold my question. We'll move on to KF9, streets and public improvements. <coughs> Matt, we had uh, some discussion uh, several months ago about uh, traffic calm installations. And uh, I think a couple of our commissioners have, have requested uh, calm estimates you know, from our engineers. Uh, and this is certainly Mr. Mannix's department. Does it make sense to include some kind of placeholder in there? We certainly had one block, 200 block a piano, 200 block a piano, you know, come to us about installing some kind of ease traffic we were publicly discussed and enhancing safety factors around the schools. Maybe we should not go line there. I, I agree. Um, Um, I mean, we're constantly getting requests um, for traffic and safety about traffic, traffic time. I mean, I get emails, phone calls all the time about people trying to avoid, you know, either avoid Roosevelt or Harlem, going down side streets and break that speed, totally ignoring stop signs, speed limit signs. I know that when the police uh, department does selective enforcement, they do you know, very, very little tickets from folks and, you know, send a little bit of a message, but the fact there is that we can't put a cop. Stationary static traffic control devices, I think, would be welcome, especially along a lot of the streets that are used to bypass main roads. Um, I, I definitely think we need to add something. It, Beloit was also talking about at the 10 1100 block and the 8 900 block on Beloit from around the middle school. <clears throat> if we could take a look at upcoming. VIP proposals where we have that half percent funding, but I, I would definitely like to see those options added to this year's VIP expenses uh, for the Hannah, for Garfield, and for the middle school ones on Beloit. Beloit's a very wide street. It's one of the only two ways south north streets, south of Roosevelt Road, and it does get a lot of traffic. I think it really needs calming there. Mm -hmm. It's interesting because we actually got letters from the school district asking for help because people um, Blatantly disregard stop signs, school buses, etc. Speed. Well, we actually have those letters. We actually had to have, I think, two or three separate meetings. I hear you make all that stuff up, sir. I do. Um, but we, so there is a need because the school district has asked, and we we did all new signs. I asked um, the uh, committee chairman to give me a list, which he hasn't provided me yet, of everything that we've done to help the school districts with, with traffic. I mean, I think that we redid. Correct me if I'm wrong. We redid every single sign, every single school zone, being consistent across the entire community. That includes the public schools and private schools, and no cell phones, no cell phone down signs. Yes, yeah, signs. Um, I believe that we actually took some council action uh, regarding doing a, a one-way street. If I'm not mistaken, um, there are similar what River Forest does, which is I believe has helped. Um, so I mean, we've been extraordinarily proactive in working on traffic calming. I think Commissioner Hoskins has been a big proponent of that. I agree that we need to put something in here to supplement that. Tim, go ahead. Your Honor, if I might just make a suggestion. Um, with the permission of the council, what I'd like to do is take um, a couple of things. Not only the list of streets that have been uh, suggested, um, but some of the, the thought processes on the type of calming and take that tra traffic and safety. Um, let them fully vet different types of traffic calming and what would work best in for example, the 900 block or 800 block of Beloit may be different than the 500 block of Moringo. Let them vet which type. I can certainly plug in some money into the one, two-year plan for traffic calming out of the VIP fund. But you know, with your permission, we'll let traffic and safety look at that and kind of give us an idea of what they think 
would be the best method to use. Working with the village engineer is, is <coughs> We're not going to make the decision today on sure. traffic safety because there's a, uh, I, I had institute, institute a new process sure. for stuff going to them. I think what we can do is we may not have to add any revenue in the current budget. Um, we're waiting. Um, our engineer is going to be given a presentation first to Commissioner Manage because all this stuff will be um, public improvements. But uh, soon, the Village Council is going to see a presentation for both some historic information, but then a plan for both resurfacing roadways, uh, doing some alleys, and traffic calming techniques can be included in that plan uh, to be paid for from VIP primarily, and especially with the uh, with the added one half percent that's going to take effect July first. There's going to be monies available to do this stuff. So I think it could be a case where we don't need to up the budget today, particularly in streets and public improvements, because there is going to be a revenue source for it. We'll have to have a discussion at some point about the specific projects um, after we kind of see that presentation from the engineer. That's where I'm kind of going with, you know, we have that number out there. And I know you've got a proposal you're bringing forward, but I, I'm hearing at least from three of us that we want to see the traffic coming on those particular locations as a fiscal 15. So whatever streamlines that, I guess what I'm trying to say is, as a commissioner, I'd like to send the village administrator a very heavy message that this is a priority towards this year as we develop that project. The way and that like, we do that is when we see this presentation from our village engineer, then that is the opportune time for the village council to say, Thank you, Mr. Engineer. Thank you for your recommendations. You're either 100% on target, or we like about 80% what you have, and here's what we are going to do. And then we'll take the appropriate action to see to it that uh, we prioritize what gets done and when it gets done. And the, the, the plan right now is, uh, and I think Tim mentioned it earlier, as of right now, the plan is to have Jim Emilio at our next council meeting to do this presentation. So it, let me say this, it's kind of on a fast track now. I just want to, I don't know if that was included in the original track. That's why I, I want to make sure that that's understood that, that the traffic calming edition for this year, if it wasn't in, that we'd really like Go to ahead, see Jim. it. Your Honor, just in this way, uh, Commissioner Hosty, a bit. Um, we put $800,000 in improvements in the VIP project for this construction season. And that can be anything that your heart desires in terms of what the construction is. So there is money in fiscal 15 for work. And as the mayor said, it'll be up to you ultimately to decide that what we've come up with is what you want, or you want us to take something out and add something back in. But there's money there this construction <coughs> season to do that work. Mayor, respectfully. Uh, I appreciate the fact that there is a revenue stream identified, but can we at least have our budget document kind of reflect that the council has, has prioritized, you know, three distinct intersections as, as anticipated, um, you know, some safety improvement, but that's really, you know, it, it's something that the public has come to us with, and we certainly want to show that we're very serious about. As you know, we know we're not adopting this today, and uh, I, I have no objections to memorializing at some point, you know, the council's desire to to do some of these traffic calming techniques. Um, so what I'm suggesting is we at least I don't think that we need to add funds. I don't want to, I don't want to add funds. Yes, I just wanted our budget document to reflect that we have high priority. I believe that we're going to end up achieving that. Tim, go ahead. Just your honor, again, I, I just suggest, Commissioner, um, I get your point to make sure it's specific, but the budget document does reflect 800,000 in, in VIP improvements and what those are, you'll decide in about seven days or eight days um, at our next council meeting. So, That's uh, under 1014. Say again? That under 1014. Uh, I believe so, yeah. It should be under yeah. CAP 14. So there's 800,000 in fiscal 215 to do 
do improvement work and again um, that can that can run the gamut of anything you folks want. And I'm hearing pretty clearly that some of that can most likely be some traffic coming in. Happy to add it in. Or not add it in, use that as what the money's gonna go for. Vanessa? Yes, just for the um the record, um, you mentioned three distinct areas. I only caught two of them at Hannah near Fairfield School and on Beloit near the middle school. Was there another There were two on Beloit, 8, uh, eight 900 and 10, 1100 on Beloit. We said three intersections. Oh, okay. All right. The Hannah and the Adams intersection. Okay. And the two uh, Beloit intersections. Either end. Okay. Thank you. Incidentally, I just read an email uh, this morning um, on one of these techniques, the roundabouts. Um, yeah, the, the engineer's uh, estimate is only about fifteen thousand dollars. You know, to put in a roundabout, which is pretty affordable. It may not be applicable to all three of these locations, um, <coughs> but uh, in terms of a traffic problem technique. Any other uh, issues on streets and public improvement? I, mean, I just want to, first of all, thanks to, you know, thanks to the staff for at least doing the research. Um, I had a brief discussion with our, our planning consultant before this year, and she mentioned that in Warrenville, they had a similar issue from speed and on the certain street. And one of the things they looked at, and, and could very well be cost prohibitive, they essentially narrowed the street and put in sort of pavers. You know, which sounds similar to what we have, I think, on, on Fillmore, going east and west. Uh, could be very expensive, but the noise that it generated uh, was certainly a uh, higher volume than what you hear on, on a regular street. And that alone uh, calms the traffic. So, you know, depending on where we go in the future, of course, just something for us to be cognizant. I think there's a clear desire to, you know, go to. Uh, prioritize uh, some type of traffic calming techniques. You know, whatever is going to achieve uh, the uh, desired result of slowing traffic down. That's all I want to say. All right, we'll move on to uh, public property, KF10. <coughs> Commissioner. Uh, hello, housekeeping. John and I have been back and forth. It's uh, pretty solid where it is. We did, we did have a couple questions. Somehow, Chris, could you speak up just so I can't quite hear you? That's very solid at the table. But there's uh, there's two items that have been in public property that I think should be moved to the community center. It's part time seasonal help and supplies for activities, which is part time that works at the community center and it's supplies for their activities. That makes no sense. That it's in we just staff it for you. I, I just take care of it for your department. It's always been in there. It's because it's at the pocket parks. Is it because it's at the pocket park? We don't have any, John doesn't have anything to do with it. He's not signing off on it. Should we move to the community center? What type of supplies are these? Just arts and crafts for the rec program. Okay. For the recreation. Doesn't, I mean, that, that's why it's always, it's always been that way. Because it's, it's uh, at the parks. Five, eight, five, five, five. 585-6180-306. But you're signing off on it, Karen, right? Would, I don't sign. He, he has to sign any bills. But Does it make sense that he's signing them? Because of the stuff that you guys are signing? It's the way it's always been. I, it's a, but we take care of it anyway. We, we staff it and we... Um, Wait, the 021, isn't that part-time for public work seasonal help? No. It's not the same. Tell me the numbers, please. Oh, it's it's the GL account number is 100-55-585-5000-021. Okay. It's part-time seasonal. Got it. And then there's uh, supplies for activities. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. 
All right, so the 585 and then 021, what was the other one? Is uh, 6180306, supplies for activities. Okay. Second. I, I think it's a housekeeping thing, right? So who runs, uh, we run the activities out of the community center? Well. There's employees that have been working there since the morning. Yes. You know, but yeah, we, we take care of it. We order their supplies and make sure they work. I do their time sheets. So, yeah. Any objections to moving this to the community center? I hear none, so that's what we're going to do. Okay. Got that. Services uh, five five two six one zero zero one zero five. It's just going up. I, can, I just get a clear idea of what that's going to be for. Um, we heard from Jim Vila that the roof doesn't need additional engineering, so um, it's gone up from seven fifty in two thousand eleven. We've never spent more than two thousand. Now we're asking for eight. And I didn't get a clear answer on why. It's, it's the one piece that had a question mark next to it. With your permission, I have an answer. Please go ahead. Um, that, that amount, Commissioner, this year is gone up because uh, we are doing the roof on the uh, Village Hall. And uh, we, we called uh, after the bid documents were received. <coughs> we did call Christopher Engineering and say, what can we expect for the remainder of this year on the roof project itself? in terms of engineering, which of course goes for the reconstruction meeting, all of the construction itself, and then um, probably one of the biggest parts is uh, the invoicing, so that we're sure we get all the Davis-Bacon Act materials um, complied with. So they told us that they should expect, or we could expect another five to $8,000 in engineering expenses it seemed to us that it made sense to attach those expenses to the public property building. Um, but obviously, it, you know, as long as I have the dollar number in some place, it doesn't matter to me much where it goes. That's in addition to what we've already, what they've yes. already done? Yes. When we have a specific line item just for the roof. Wouldn't that be included under that line item? And, that line item covers the contractors yes. and yeah, it doesn't cover the engineering item. Could put it in there, but you know it, because we had a specific question about the engineering, we call it asked and we know that that number should be increased. It just doesn't doesn't matter to us which department it goes in, but it's gonna be an expense. Sense we just move into streets and public improvements. You got a line item? I should have a line item. Right here. Mm -hmm. Yes, engineering services. <coughs> right now we have a $2,000 request. We just bumped that up to 10. What's the uh, count number? That is uh, 150-502-6100-105. Without objection, we'll move the 8,000 from public property to streets and public improvements. And Tish, you got that account number? Okay. Anything else on public property? We'll move on to tab 11, general fund rates. Tab 12, general fund vehicles. Tab 13, water fund. Tab 14, just the water fund. 
Jim, does it make sense for us to start looking at repainting water towers? I didn't hear the question. Does it make sense for us to start looking? I know you had mentioned in your slide, you know, long-term capital, and since the water fund does have a little bit of a positive balance, um, just additional repainting. Uh, I know some of the some of our equipment is getting a little bit old, fancy deferred maintenance, water tower painting, etc. Uh, I'm just throwing out an idea. Just to, we don't necessarily have to do it. Just something to think about. Commissioner, I'll uh, again. I I feel a little bad about talking about the mythical uh, presentation that you're going to see shortly at the next meeting, but the middle, uh, that meeting uh, will include some significant water main and infrastructure improvements. Um, with that water fund, while it's shown now as revenue, I have a, a plan that's going to use a fair amount of that revenue to do water main improvements, and, and you will be seeing that in the very near future. That, so the commissioner was asking about whether or not we should explore uh, maintenance to our water towers. Ah. But it's a worthy idea, yeah. we, but we should have somebody take a look at it. Well, that was, yeah, because yeah. right, I would yeah. figure that doing maintenance now could possibly save a whole bunch of money down the road. I'm yeah. on a roller a really it, long pole. Right. If you're out of short of painting, I will tell you that um, it's actually been an interesting process because several of the cell companies are moving away from using things like water towers. Um, they're making their antennas much smaller and they're literally putting them on phone poles now and things like that. Uh, one of the things that the village requires is sort of a before and after picture of what the water tower looked like before um, you moved all your stuff and then what it looked like after. Anytime we get any cell phone request at all to look at our tower at all, that goes right to the engineer. And so I'll bet you probably three times in the last year, our village engineer has done a significant evaluation of at least the top of the tower. Uh, things like painting and stuff is more visual and, and we can uh, certainly tell that stuff. But I will tell you that I'm, I'm just starting the process now at looking at things like variable speed pumps for the pumping stations because there's a significant energy savings with those and there's grant money available for those. So I, I get it and um, I, I agree with you. So we're working at it. I would ask you to maybe just hold off until I know uh, they're trying to uh, set up a time for you to meet with uh, Jim Emilio. And so again, if all goes well at our next village council meeting, you guys, I'll just respect the lady here, ladies here, you guys are gonna see for the first time something that all of you, all of you ultimately are gonna be able to take credit for. And that's going to be, in addition to the historic information, an actual proposed like five-year capital improvement plan for infrastructure and other related stuff but at least it's going to be a five-year plan that as each year goes by it's going to have to be updated and it'll be things like it could be painting the water tower maybe it doesn't need it today based on evaluation, maybe it needs it six years from now, something like that. Um, but all these big ticket items, rather than waiting for stuff to get to a deplorable stage, we're going to start forecasting, and uh, it, it, it's off to a good start. I, I think everybody's going to be pleased when you see it, and, and meaning I think you're going to be pleased with the concept. Again, the, the, the actual goals and objectives over the five years, it's going to be left up to the village council to decide. But we're going to have a true active plan in place to serve as a guide. So, um, if you wouldn't mind me just holding off until you see that. No, that's fine, Mr. Mayor. I was just crazy. I think it's going to. I think it's going to fit right in. That's phenomenal. Yeah. All right, we're moving on to tab. Anything else in water? We're going to move on to tab 14. What's 
Um, major funds, VIP, and TIF. Then we'll move on to tab 15, non-major governmental funds. And then we'll open it up for general conversation. Can I go? Go ahead. Just general thoughts. Yes. Um, I think it's been a couple of years since we've revisited our mobile phones. I know the water department's got some public property. The building department has some phones. Have we looked at renegotiating some of those contracts with carriers, Tim? Um, I would tell you that on the uh, mobile phone side of it, no. Okay. On the um, landline side of it, yes. Uh, we're working, um, let me rephrase that. We're trying to work hard with AT&T um, to kind of go through our entire system and help us understand what may be no longer relevant to us or lines we don't need. So we're doing it with AT&T to the point where um, it's a little scary, but several municipalities now are having some good luck with going outside of AT&T. Um, we've done that before and it didn't work out well, but I think technology has improved, so um, I think that in the, I would say in the next fiscal year, you know, we should be revisiting AT&T and potentially entertaining some options from other uh, providers. The mobile phone side, we have not looked at in a while, but that's certainly something we can do. Oh, did you? I'm sorry, Sally. Just go ahead. There was um, a data plan review, and you said oh, that okay, okay. So, just, so we did re at least reduce the uh, monthly fees related to uh, data plans. We're paying for more than being used. Great. I was just curious if there had been a review of that. Sorry. Your Honor. Um, obviously, you know, but I, for the whole class here, uh, the mayor has started working with members of the community towards a economic development committee or it doesn't really have a title but for building up business recruitment things like that in the village uh, I think that committee through the mayor's department should get some sort of funding I potentially like to see a, uh, my suggestion would be somebody in a Joellen capacity for community development under public health and safety but funded some form from our group I, I think it's time to redouble down like they did in the 90s when they created the uh, Main Street Redevelopment. It's that time and Tony's with his leadership has gotten that started. But bottom line, it's gonna need some funding. It's, it's not gonna come from anywhere out of the sky. I think we need to step up as a community and put some investment in that. <coughs> We're competing with Berwyn with their development core. Uh, the Oak Park business development is quadrupled, I believe, their budget, not more. There's a lot of competition in our surrounding communities going after the same groups of businesses and building up their business quarters. I think we need to do the same here. So at least a placeholder fund. How much? Millions. Okay. I'm on board. You know, it is difficult to estimate. Um, you know, this whole economic uh, development is just kind of getting kicked off the ground. And, you know, it's going to take another meeting or two before I think that we really start bringing some, some vision to uh, what our purpose is ultimately going to be. But as part of that, <coughs> uh, there's no doubt in my mind that we're going to need to spend some money to, uh, to bring in a consultant or part-time help for some period of time to, uh, to do some certain analysis, <coughs> uh, particularly a uh, complete business inventory of every single business in town, both existing and vacant, uh, whether or not they own the property or lease the property, and the square footage, and how many employees do they have, so that we have a really, really good um, view of the, the commercial climate uh, in Forest Park. So, 
you know, it's, it, it's difficult to say how much. Um, it would be nice to at least have they have some type of earmarks set aside so that um, <coughs> at least we'd have the provisions for it within the budget. If we, uh, when we get to the point of needing to uh, take on some of these challenges, that we would have the money to pay for. It. You know, I throw out a number, but I don't think it's a number that has to be spent. But a number that the potential and you know, let's grow with in the investment. My number is forty. You know, that could be materials, a part-time employee, and you know, different wings of advertising, money towards if that is what comes out of this committee. You know, it's really in its infancy right now with a lot of good ideas coming from the people who are on it, but until you fund it, you can't get anything done. I'm in agreement there. Uh, I, I listened personally to WBBO, Radio 5, the local CBS station. And anyone who listens to that, I'm sure has heard of a message from Bedford Park. You know, they're extremely aggressive. I've heard of Randall in their community. That's got to be really expensive. Well, I'm not saying we have to spend as much as they are. But I'm just throwing it out there. No, I've heard, yeah. They've I've heard, too. They're impressive. One of the things they also do is they use testimonials you know, from existing businesses. Yeah. So the business that has, has gotten support from us, I will regard that no cost to us. Um, no one's better at talking to CEOs than other CEOs. You know, one business that comes to mind is Curry Motors. Right? They have a pretty good revenue. And then we've done other things for uh, businesses, not tips, right? So uh, I just went and get general level support. I was going to suggest, uh, you know, if, if, that you give me the support up to fifty thousand dollars, at least they have in the budget as a placeholder. Uh, again, they're, 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 what I envision is there's going to be a combination of uh, some free services. I'm uh, communicating with the University of Illinois right now. They have an extension unit uh, where I, I think we'll be able to get some free services. But at some point, I mean, you got to bite the apple and you got to step up to the plate. And that's going to involve whether it's radio advertising or um, uh, advertising in, in, in magazines or billboard advertising. You know, if we want to continue to bolster our community, we've got to put our money where our mouth is. But, you know, to your point, just branding our community. You know, we're going to have this. We'll, we'll, we'll decide, uh, you know, exactly what to create a new account or something like that. But This is going on to public affairs? Yes. Thank you. All right. Any other thoughts, suggestions, comments? Yes. Uh, <coughs> Mr. Host, he's talking on increased revenues and Painting water towers. Uh, Tim and I had a brief discussions about uh, seeking uh, uh, sponsors for certain local properties and water towers to maybe be ideal or something like that. Um, where you could essentially sell the rights to it, have them paint it, um, and then that's a revenue source. I don't know where we're at. We just talked about it a few weeks ago, a month ago, at the most. That was something that Tim was going to explore. So just to touch on. Two sides here that came up earlier. Okay. Any other thoughts, ideas, concerns about the sponsor of water towers? Oh, whatever. Well, I was actually just thinking again, this has come up at the last couple council meetings, is it may be beneficial um, from the community perspective, especially now that our school local editor is showing up, um, to spend a little bit of time looking at cleaning up the chambers down here. I mean, those are, that's a temporary setup up there. I believe they're all still eye hooked together if you look behind them and you walk. No, that's so they're mobile. So they're mobile, so you can move them and rearrange them like we've done so often. <laughs> Not once my That's original equipment, 1975. Hey, original is <laughs> great. It's retro, right? You get a lot for it on the. Uh, and and the, 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 the original, just so you know, the reason that it, you know, that, that's three sections. <clears throat> Don't hold me to it. I'm only guessing that they had it built in the three sections so that it can be moved around, but it's never been moved. I understand that. I'm just thinking between, you know, I, I, would, I would think that Commissioner Harris would agree with me on this, is that when we have presentations, there's always, you know, two men out or two commissioners out where you have to either move or you know, change your position. 
or when someone's speaking at one of the podium, one of the staff gets up there, it's difficult to make eye contact, correct questions to them. Uh, you know, obviously it looks a little dated. Uh, I don't know that we've got necessarily the money per se to do it, but I think it's worth at least having the conversation. You know, staying part of the whole accordion yeah, things that are. We should have took before and after pictures. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, I don't disagree. I just think it's something uh, worth looking into. You know, maybe make it a little bit easier to refer to it as the lower level versus the basement and the other things. <laughs> well, and then this is technically the council chambers. Right. It could <laughs> use a little help. We, we could use a little updating. Some of you may uh, may recall this used to be all paneled. Okay. It was all paneled, and those accordion doors were or was it orange? They were orange. orange. Yeah. Um, and so we did. You know, we did kind of a stop gap measure and the paneling off and the carpets do too. We have orange plastic chairs. chairs. And we had the plastic orange chairs. Oh, they're actually multicolored. Yeah, they were orange chairs. I think the community yeah, center still <laughs> use <laughs> I think the community center still <laughs> using them too. Community center has but you know, if you have a little uh um, <laughs> maybe they can go to the historical society museum. A little retro desire. Oh, you know, you go teeing off the picture of Max's idea, it, it might be worth having a permanent layout of this room so when we come in and we do the presentations there is a drop down screen with a built in or where somebody can just plug in i know every other monday it seems poor sally's trying to reboot up the computer there should be some central station that that's always there mm -hmm. you know, and maybe some of those awards that are lining the halls upstairs we're probably running out of room we have a lot of white wall in here things like that could be addressed the front of that probably wouldn't take too much to throw some drywall on there. Tie it up and make it permanently so the stair doesn't make me feel like I'm going to kill myself every time during the Pledge of Allegiance. Things like that could be made a little more permanent. It wouldn't take a lot to do things like that. Maybe it, put some money towards it. It seems down. like there's a uh, you know a shared goal that we look at making some improvements in our council chambers. So we'll put staff some on visual, that. Some electronic like, modernization. We'll put staff on that task to at least do some research, get some numbers put together. No, 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 no disrespect to Jerry. See, he wasn't on the scene kind of at the time when we had these plastic chairs down. And then, the, you know, the mayor kind of saw to it that. We, uh, we lightened it up and we bought these little more comfortable chairs and now more people start coming. So we, when we had the plastic chairs, nobody showed up. <laughs> I think we should get rid of orange. Yeah, I, don't, I don't like orange or plastic, so you're... And Jean's sitting there like, I, I don't have any idea what you're talking about. <laughs> no, nobody, would, nobody would come to our meetings when we had these plastic chairs because they were so uncomfortable. And so we decided we made a conscious decision, but this goes back a number of years. We made a conscious decision to make it a little more inviting. And, and it worked. Any other ideas, thoughts, suggestions? Before you adjourn, I do have a closing comment, but whenever you're ready for that. Go ahead. I just, I want to just take a moment and thank, obviously, each of the elected officials for uh, understanding the budget and understanding that um, we, we do have a very limited amount of revenue and um, accepting that. But most importantly, I want to uh, acknowledge each of the department heads for understanding that to even a fuller extent. Um, certainly, if I I gave them all a blank sheet of paper and a pen. They could come up with a pretty significant wish list. And uh, frequently, they not only get nothing out of their wish list, they give up things that were in their budget. So um, it is absolutely a group effort uh, to keep the village running the way that it runs um, on budget. And then finally, uh, to Tish, Danielle, the finance department, putting together really a wonderful budget for us and a wonderful presentation. Uh, my hands off to So that's all I have. Thank you. I'll give you guys a minute. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved by Maddox. Is there a second? Second. Second by Hostie.
Madam Clerk, you may call the roll. Commissioner Mosby? Aye. Commissioner Haskins? Aye. 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 Stand adjourned. Aye. Hey, Gene, I can ask you a question.